Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. After several months, we are again dealing with Indo-Pakistani conflicts. This time we will focus on Pakistani counter-air operations in the 1971 war. You are likely familiar with the events that led to this conflict, but if you are not, we will briefly recap. Before this war, Pakistan consisted of two geographically separated parts. The eastern part is now an independent nation of Bangladesh. While this was an integral part of Pakistan, most people who lived there felt they were not treated equally and desired more autonomy. Pakistani military junta was not prepared to give it and they eventually tried to restore control over the eastern part of the country by a military intervention. This caused civilian deaths, an open rebellion and an Indian involvement. In the end, the result was a new nation of Bangladesh. As you might expect, Pakistan and India have completely different views on that story. According to Pakistan, India took advantage of the situation and its motive was simply to cut its arch enemy by half. India sees its involvement as support to the liberation of Bangladesh and protection of persecuted civilians. On 3rd December 1971, Pakistan launched airstrikes against Indian air bases under codename Operation Genghis Khan. You may have noticed that the word preemptive in the title was put under inverted commas. The reason for this is that this term is disputed. Pakistan doesn't see them as preemptive at all, since Indian military forces had already been involved in the fighting in East Pakistan from late November. So, Pakistan sees the airstrike simply as a response against the country which invaded its territory. The majority of Pakistani military forces was located in the west. For example, there was just one fighter squadron in the east. Shifting assets between the two halves wasn't easy, with India between them. Just before the war, Pakistan moved two infantry divisions to the east by airlift. However, all the heavy equipment was left behind. But essentially, Pakistani's strategy was to defend the east by attacking from the west. Sources used for this video came from both sides. On the Pakistani side, there is Against All Odds by Kaiser Tufail and Flight of the Falcon by Syed Sajjad Haider. They are both former Pakistani Air Force fighter pilots. Haider was a squadron commander in the 1965 war and a wing commander in the 1971 war. On the Indian side, we have the official history of the 1971 India-Pakistan war and My Years with the IAF by Air Chief Marshal P.C. Lyle. He was the Vice Chief of Staff in the 1965 war and the Chief in 1971. Pakistani airstrikes were launched in late afternoon to take advantage of reduced light at dusk. Initial targets were air bases located near the border and two radar stations. Aircraft used for these missions were F-86 Sabre, Mirage 3 and F-104. Main focus was runways primarily because lessons have been learned from the 1965 war and also the 1967 Arab-Israeli war. All the Indian aircraft were placed within hardened shelters and blast bands, which made their destruction difficult and risky. Despite lacking dedicated anti-runway weapons, it was concluded by Pakistani leadership that simply denying Indian Air Force the use of their air bases for several hours was worth the risk. Air bases such as Amritsar and Patankot were only two minutes of flight from the border, while Srinagar and Avantipura in Kashmir could be approached using hills and valleys as a cover. The first strikes took place at 5.09 pm. Airfields at Srinagar and Avantipura in Kashmir were attacked. Avantipura was a non-operational reserve airfield. Each airfield was attacked by four F-86 Sabres of 26 Squadron, with two Sabres escorting each group.
Pakistani aircraft dropped two 500-pound bombs each, and after that, their escort carried out strafing runs. The attacks were considered successful, but Sajjad Haider points out that this wasn't confirmed by recon photos. Just a minute later, F-104 starfighters from Sargoda attacked two Indian radar stations, one at Amritsar and the other at Faridkot. They didn't carry any bombs, but relied on their Gatling guns only. Two F-104s that attacked Farid Kot claimed they hit the radar successfully. However, one of them also saw a light Krishak airplane on the adjacent landing ground. The target was tempting enough for a second pass. The Indian airplane was damaged, which is confirmed by the official Indian history. Pakistani sources don't agree on which pilot caused the damage. According to Kaiser to file, he was the leader, Wing Commander Arif Iqbal. According to Sajjad Haider, he was the wingman, Flight Lieutenant Aman. Another pair of F-104s attacked the radar site at Amritsar. The lead plane was equipped with a locally developed radar homing device. This helped locate the camouflage radar. According to Kaiser to file, Veda was hit and stayed non-operational for a couple of hours. Sajjad Haider is again more critical and says that there was no confirmation that either radar went off the air. Minutes later, at 5.16 pm, four unescorted Mirages attacked Amritsar Air Base. Fortunately for them, the runway was lit and they dropped two 750-pound bombs each on it. Three of the Mirages dropped the bombs, while the fourth one was unable to do so. PC Lal confirms that four to five craters were made. The airbase was closed for several hours. Patankot is the base that came under attack next. At 5.17 pm, four Mirages arrived but couldn't find the runway due to evening haze. Pakistani aircraft were equipped by Doppler navigation, but that didn't help. 
The flight leader Aftar Balam ordered his pilots to drop the bomb in the general vicinity of the airbase. Six minutes later, the Mirages were followed by four F-86Fs from 15th Squadron, escorted by another four Sabres. Led by squadron leader Gilani, they were able to find the runway and three of them dropped their bombs, while the fourth Sabre was unable to do so. Saber escorts then flew strafing passes since AAA wasn't very heavy. Taxi track and a part of the runway are believed to have been damaged. Of these early attacks, one quarter is considered unsuccessful. Pakistani aircraft either couldn't find their targets or their bombs hung. Due to shallow dive angles, runway craters were easy to repair and all the Indian air bases were operational by morning. None of the Pakistani aircraft were lost. The Pakistani campaign was continued during the night. B-57 Canberra was the main type used for these attacks, but C-130 Hercules and T-33 Trainer was also used. Night attacks also included Indian air bases located far from the border. India claims one B-57 shot down on the first night, but that is disputed by Pakistan. Throughout the war, Pakistani Air Force flew 130 night airstrikes against Indian air bases. 40% of those are considered unsuccessful and three B-57s were shot down in a single night. Pakistani attacks against Indian radars and air bases continued in the morning of 4 December 1971. Two F-104 starfighters attacked the radar at Barnawa. 6.35 a.m. Indian official history confirms that the radar stayed off the air for 12 hours. Then came the attack on radar at Amritsar, which was still functional after the initial strike. At 6.50, a pair of F-104s flown by squadron leaders Rashid Bhatti and Amanullah appeared at the site and prepared for an attack. As Bhatti was diving on the target, Amanullah warned him that there was an Indian gnat on his tail. Bhatti dropped his tanks and sped away in full afterburner. Amanullah was able to launch his sidewinder at the gnat but being in haste to join his leader, he didn't observe the results. Gun camera film was too hazy to draw any conclusions, so this is not considered a kill. Amritsar radar had to be attacked again, so two F-104s took off at midday. This time, squadron leader Rashid Bhatti flew with squadron leader Amjad Hussein. While approaching the targets, Bhatti spotted a pair of Indian Suhoi 7s orbiting overhead. Amjad then maneuvered behind one of the Suhois, but the second one was able to maneuver behind Amjad. 
Bati warned him and Amjad disengaged and sped away. Bati was able to launch one Sidewinder, which he claims hit one of the Su 7s. He attempted to chase the second one, but he was facing asymmetric flight conditions, because only one of his fuel tanks dropped. Pakistani intelligence noted an ejection of Flight Lieutenant Natu of No. 108 Squadron around Amritsar at that time. However, Indian sources claim that his airplane was previously damaged by AAA on his mission. To sum up, the kill is disputed. This, however, meant that the Amritsar radar was still online. The next day, on 5th December, Pakistan launched a strike of two more F-104s. This time, Pakistani pilots were out of luck and one F-104 was shot down by anti-aircraft guns. Squadron leader Amjad Hussein ejected and was captured. Another interesting attack on 5th December was that of four F-86s on Srinagar Air Base. Wing Commander Abdul Aziz led the flights and they are believed to have dropped four bombs on the main runway and four on adjacent fairweather strip. but an Indian Alouette helicopter was spotted flying near the airfield. According to Tefile and Indian official history, the helicopter was shot down by the Sabres and two men were seriously injured. The Indian official history contradicts itself a bit when you look at the table of admitted Indian aircraft losses. Two Alouettes were listed lost, one destroyed on the ground and one lost in a flying incident. In DCS World we don't have Alouettes, so the helicopter shown in the video is an approximation only. There were many more counter air missions flown by Pakistani Air Force, but not all of them can be mentioned or reenacted. Altogether, 288 missions of this type were flown during the war. Of those, 158 at daytime and 130 at nighttime. 28% of them are considered unsuccessful by Pakistanis. They admit loss of two aircraft in daytime missions and three in nighttime. Indian official history describes the Pakistani campaign as dismal failure. It labels Pakistani Air Force activity as primarily defensive with the purpose of preserving their numbers for a longer war. 
any damage caused to Indian air bases was essentially low and repaired quickly. The author does admit that Pakistani Air Force fought against an enemy twice its size and was able to survive the fight mostly intact. Indians admit only two airplanes and one helicopter lost on the ground as a result of Pakistani airstrikes. One vampire, one Marut and the already mentioned Alouette helicopter. How do Pakistani authors summarize their counter-air campaign? Tafail admits that the results were nowhere close to those of a textbook campaign. On the other hand, he writes that the campaign disrupted Indian Air Force operations to an adequate extent, and that with 10% of the total war effort, the scale of the counter-air operations was optimal for softening up base and well orchestrated. We could conclude that the effects of Pakistani counter-air campaign were mostly psychological, and they had a relatively low effect on operational activities of the Indian Air Force. India launched its own counter-air campaign, Sadly, due to the lack of proper assets in DCS world, it would currently be very hard to reenact, but hopefully that will change someday. If you liked the video, make sure to press the like button, join our Discord server, support the channel on Patreon if you're able to, and keep watching Showtime 1-1-2.